Hi guys, welcome to my study compass. In this video, I'll be walking you through the past paper, Math B1, variant 2, February March 2019. Let's get started. A mathematics lesson starts at 11.05. The lesson lasts for 75 minutes. Work out the time the lesson ends. To get the time the lesson ends, we simply add the time duration for the lesson, which is 75 minutes, to the time the lesson starts, which is 11.05. Under the minute column, 5 plus 75 is 80. 60 minutes is 1 hour. So we add 1 to the hour column and leave the remaining 20 minutes under the minute column. Under the hour column, 11 plus 1 is 12. So the lesson ends at 12.20. The probability that it will be sunny tomorrow is 0 0.97. Work out the probability that it will not be sunny tomorrow. The sum of the probabilities that it will be sunny tomorrow and not sunny tomorrow must add up to 1. So to get the probability that it will not be sunny tomorrow, we subtract 0 0.97 from 1, which gives us 0 0.03. Complete the statement. Angle blank is a reflex angle. Angle C is a reflex angle because it is greater than 180 degrees and less than 360 degrees. The temperature at 7 o'clock is negative 3 degrees Celsius. The temperature is 11 degrees Celsius, higher than the temperature at 1 o'clock. Find the temperature at 1 o'clock. We are told the temperature at 7 o'clock, which is negative 3 degrees Celsius, is 11 degrees Celsius, higher than the temperature at 1 o'clock, which we are calling T. This simply means negative 3 degrees Celsius equals 11 degrees Celsius plus T. When we subtract 11 from both sides, we get T equals negative 14 degrees Celsius. Jody swims 22 lengths of a swimming pool to raise money for charity. She receives $15 for each length she swims. Calculate how much money Jody raises for charity. To get the total money she raises for charity, we simply multiply 22 by $15, which gives us $330. A student measures the angles in a triangle as 55 degrees, 85 degrees, and 50 degrees. Explain why the student is incorrect. This is because the sum of the angles the student measures add up to 190 degrees instead of 180 degrees. The diagram shows a net of a solid. Write down the mathematical name of the solid. The solid is a triangular prism. Write 0 0.046875 correct to two significant figures. The second significant figure is 6. The number after 6, which is 8, is greater than 5. So we add 1 to 6, giving us 7. The numbers after 6 become 0. Since these zeros come after the decimal point, they are insignificant. So we have 0 0.047 rounded to two significant figures. Write 2,760,000 in standard form. To write this number in standard form, we move the decimal point at the end of the number to a position after the first non-zero digit, which is 2. So we have 2.76. Since we moved the decimal point 6 units to the left, we multiply 2.76 by 10 raised to the power 6. Reflect this shape in the line AB. To be able to reflect the shape, we first need to identify the vertices of the shape. Then we reflect the vertices of the shape in line AB. So for this point, 
Since we move two units downwards to touch the line of reflection, we also need to move two units downwards from the line of reflection to pin the new position of the points. After repeating the same process for all the vertices of the shape, we are able to map out the reflected image of the shape. Write down the six factors of 12. We can get the factors of 12 by first listing out the numbers that multiply to give us 12. From this, we see that the factors of 12 are 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. Write as a single vector 3e. We've been given vector e to be negative 5, 4. So to get the resulting vector, we multiply each element in vector e by 3. So 3 times negative 5 is negative 15. 3 times 4 is 12. So we have negative 15, 12. Write as a single vector f minus e. We know f is 0, 6 and e is negative 5, 4. To get the resulting vector, we subtract corresponding elements in the two vectors. So 0 minus negative 5 is 5. 6 minus 4 is 2. So we have 5, 2. Simplify. y raised to the power 5 all cubed. The powers of y multiply, so we have y raised to the power 5 times 3. 5 times 3 is 15, so we have y raised to the power 15. Simplify w raised to the power 7 divided by w raised to the power negative 2. Since the terms have the same base and they are dividing, their powers subtract. So we have w raised to the power 7 minus negative 2. 7 minus negative 2 is 9. So we have w raised to the power 9. Without using a calculator, estimate by rounding each number correct to one significant figure, square root of 104.3 divided by 8.72 minus 7.389. You must show all your work in. For 104.3, the first significant figure is 1. The number after 1, which is 0, is less than 5. So we maintain 1 and the numbers after 1 become 0. So 104.3 becomes 100 rounded to one significant figure. For 8.72, the first significant figure is 8. The number after 8, which is 7, is greater than 5. So we add 1 to 8, giving us 9. The numbers after 8 become 0. Since these zeros come after the decimal point, they are insignificant. So 8.72 becomes 9, rounded to one significant figure. For 7.389, the first significant figure is 7. The number after 7, which is 3, is less than 5. So we maintain 7 and the numbers after 7 become 0. Since these zeros come after the decimal point, they are insignificant. So 7.389 becomes 7, rounded to one significant figure. Square root of 100 is 10. 9 minus 7 is 2. 10 over 2 gives us 5. A tourist changes $500 to euros when the exchange rate is 1 euro equals $1.0697. Calculate how many euros he receives. First, we set up the currency conversion to find the equivalent of $500 in euros, which is what we are calling x. When we cross multiply and make x the subject, this is what we have, which is equal to 467.42 euros rounded to two decimal places. Change 645 millimeters into centimeters. To convert 645 millimeters to centimeters, we multiply 645 by 10 raised to the power negative 1. This gives us 64.5 centimeters. Change 4.1 meters cubed into centimeters cubed. To convert 4.1 meters cubed to centimeters cubed, we multiply 4.1 by 10 raised to the power 6. This gives us 
4,100,000 cm3. The width W meters of a room is 4.2 meters, correct to the nearest 10 centimeters. Complete the statement about the value of W. To correct the width W to the nearest 10 centimeters, we have 4.2 meters. Then we bring in plus and minus 10 centimeters, which is 0 0.1 meters. Then we divide 0 0.1 meters by 2. So the lower bound of W would be 4.2 minus 0 0.1 over 2 meters, which is equal to 4.15 meters. And the upper bound of W would be 4.2 plus 0 0.1 over 2 meters, which is equal to 4.25 meters. So we have W is greater than and equal to 4.15 and less than 4.25. Draw the enlargement of the triangle by skill factor 3, center x. First, we need to mark the center of enlargement, which is point x. Then, we need to move each vertex on the triangle such that we are able to reproduce the enlarged image of the triangle. Let's pick point C. To move from the center of enlargement to point C, we move 3 units to the right and 1 unit downwards. To pin the new position of point C, since the scale factor is positive 3, we need to move 3 times the distance we moved initially and in the same direction. This means we are going to move 9 units to the right and 3 units downwards. After repeating the same process for all the vertices on the triangle, we are now able to map out the enlarged image of the triangle. The probability that a sweet made in a factory is the wrong shape is 0.0028. One day, the factory makes 25,000 sweets. Calculate the number of sweets that are expected to be the wrong shape. This number is equal to the probability that a sweet made in the factory is in the wrong shape, which is 0.0028 times 25,000. This gives us 70. Factorize completely. 8g squared minus 4g. The terms have a common factor of 4g. When we factor out 4g, we are left with 2g minus 1. Solve the simultaneous equations. You must show all your working. First, let's label the given equations. We will be using the elimination method. Since we have minus 3y in equation 1 and 3y in equation 2, we can eliminate y by adding equation 1 to equation 2. This gives us 8x equals 28. When we divide both sides by 8, we get x equals 3.5. We can now plug in the value of x into any of the equations to get the value of y. If we pick equation 2, we have 2 times 3.5 plus 3y equals 16. 2 times 3.5 is 7. When we subtract 7 from both sides, we have 3y equals 9. And when we divide both sides by 3, we get y equals 3. Calculate the total surface area of the cuboid. Here is the formula for the total surface area of a cuboid. In this case, the length L of the cuboid is 12 cm, the width W is 5 cm, and the height H is 7.5 cm. When we plug in these values into the equation, this is what we have. When we type this into the calculator, we get 375 cm squared. The number of passengers on a train increases from 63 to 77. Calculate the percentage increase. The percentage increase is equal to the increase in passengers, which is 77 minus 63, divided by the initial number of passengers, which is 63, times 100%. When we type this into the calculator, we get 22.2%, rounded to three significant figures.
The diagram shows a quadrilateral on a 1 cm square grid. Write down the mathematical name of this quadrilateral. The name of the given quadrilateral is a kite. Work out the area of this quadrilateral. Give the units of your answer. The area of the kite is equal to the product of its diagonals, which is 6 cm times 8 cm divided by 2. This gives us 24 cm squared. If you don't remember this formula for the kite, you can split the kite into two triangles and find the sum of the areas of the two triangles. Five numbers have a mean of 9.4. Four of the numbers are 3, 5, 10, and 12. Work out the range of the five numbers. First, we need to find the fifth number, which we are going to call x. The mean of the five numbers, which has been given us 9.4, is equal to the sum of the five numbers, which is 3 plus 5 plus 10 plus 12 plus x, divided by 5. 3 plus 5 plus 10 plus 12 is 30. When we multiply both sides by 5, we get 47 equals 30 plus x. When we subtract 30 from both sides, we get x equals 17. Now we know the fifth number is 17. So the range is equal to the biggest of the five numbers, which is 17, minus the smallest number, which is 3. 17 minus 3 gives us 14. Without using a calculator, work out 3 1 over 8 divided by 5 over 12. You must show all your working and give your answer as a mixed number in its simplest form. First, we convert the mixed fraction 3 1 over 8 into an improper fraction. So 8 times 3 plus 1 is 25, which we divide by 8. In the next step, we have 25 over 8. Then we replace the division with multiplication. Then we bring in the reciprocal of 5 over 12, which is 12 over 5. 5 goes into itself one time and goes into 25 five times. 4 goes into 12 3 times and goes into 8 2 times. So for the numerator, 5 times 3 is 15 and for the denominator, 2 times 1 is 2. 15 over 2 is an improper fraction, so we need to convert it into a mixed fraction. 2 goes into 15 7 times with a remainder of 1, which we divide by 2. So we have 7 1 over 2. Triangles ABC and BCD are both right-angled triangles. Calculate the value of Y. To get Y, we apply the Pythagoras theorem to triangle BCD. This gives us 5.3 squared equals Y squared plus 4.4 squared. When we make Y the subject, this is what we get. When we type this into the calculator, we get 2.95 centimeters rounded to three significant figures. Calculate the value of x. To get x, we apply Sokatoa to triangle ABC. This gives us sine x equals 5.3 centimeters divided by 8.2 centimeters. When we make x the subject, this is what we have. When we type this into the calculator, we get 40.3 degrees rounded to one decimal place. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this video useful. See you in the next video. Bye guys.